I think anyone that has like a really strong feeling about something, just go with it. Hi, I'm Tom Daly and this is Knitting Talk, where two people that really love each other and know each other well have a sit down and chat over some knitting, or in my case today, I'm gonna be crocheting. The biggest lesson I wish I'd learned sooner is perspective. I think people generally, and myself included, find it really difficult to have perspective on their lives because we all live in such a bubble that we think that what we're doing is the most important thing in the world and is the most stressful thing in the world and we have to get it right. Sometimes taking a step back and looking at the perspective of like what actually matters in the world is really difficult to do and it's something that I only learned how to do later in my diving career. And it's having that perspective of what matters most and the fact that for me, I was more than a diver. I'm more than a diver, I'm a parent, I'm a husband, I'm a friend, I'm a knitter, I'm a crocheter, I fight for LGBT rights. There's more to what I was doing in the pool, whereas I used to funnel all of my self-worth into how well I was diving. So once I was able to step out from that, it made a huge difference. Taking the two year break and going and doing all the bits that I was doing and having fun and all of that made me realize that nobody actually cares about what we do in diving. Nobody cares. Nobody cares in sport. Like, they'll care for that one week that it's on. And then it's over, and then it's done, and it's so fleeting. But we work so hard, and we build it up to be the biggest thing in our lives, and what is going to define us, when actually, it doesn't really matter. We're not saving any lives. We're just doing it because we love it. But what ends up happening is you get to the point where you're going to a competition, and you want to do so well, so badly, that you torture yourself through the whole experience. And at the end of the day, I'm so lucky to be able to be a diver, and travel around the world, meet amazing people, get to compete and do the thing that I love to do. But every diver that you speak to will find themselves being tortured because they want to do well so badly. Letting go of that and just being like, I'm here, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. No matter what happens in this competition, I'm here to enjoy it. And I think that's one lesson that I wish I'd learned earlier, is to have that kind of perspective. I think it's very easy to get wrapped back up into the bubble of that is what your world. And I think I'll just have to constantly remind myself of that sense of perspective. That's why I think it's important for people to have things outside of what they do every day. To be able to escape their world, their work, their, their goals, to be able to go and do something else. Because if you just have one thing going on in your life, of course that's gonna be the thing that you're just gonna be thinking about every second of the day. Whereas if you have other things going on, whether it's simple things, more complicated things, just having something outside of what you have to do every day makes a huge difference I would say. I know it's gonna sound silly but I do feel lucky to be me every day because I have an amazing husband, I have two amazing kids, my mum's great, my friends are great. I'm so lucky to be able to do the thing that I love to do every single day whether that's knitting, crochet or diving I know full well that I can't complain about anything. I am I am incredibly lucky and I feel so privileged. It didn't come without hard work, you know, I didn't come from anything. I had to work to get to diving competitions. We used to do like bag packing in, you know, in the supermarkets when we were younger to be able to like try and raise enough money to be able to go to diving competitions and things like that. But with all of that hard work and the people around me, I feel incredibly lucky to have used what I love to do from the age of seven years old to propel me into the opportunities that I do have today. So, I mean, yeah, I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky. Someone that's up for an adventure, someone that's up for a good time, someone that is like a yes person to be like, let's do this crazy hike. Yeah, I'm down, let's do it. Or let's go to a water park on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, let's do it. Like someone that is able to live in the moment, that's a green flag for me. There's a couple of memories that I revisit the most. One being when Robbie was born, one being when Phoenix was born, my and Lance's wedding. I sometimes, when I'm driving, in particularly in LA, I'm like driving home from training, and I will like relive the Tokyo Olympic gold moment and I'll relive it in my head to the point where I'm driving, I'm crying. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like driving, I've got like this <laughs> really like, 
kind of, I mean, it looks kind of obnoxious, but it's like we've got this like yellow Jeep Wrangler with like this Diamante license plate on the back. And it's really, really, I mean, it's gay. It is gay. And I just, I'm there driving and like, if anybody looks past and I'm just like, there, like crying, like, I'm like looking out the window, like, oh. And then I like snap myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Like what? But it is kind of wild to be able to go back to that moment and have those same feelings like again and again. Yeah, that was one moment that I probably relive the most. Obviously I've been a big lover of fashion for a long time. I always wanted to be able to kind of get into the fashion industry and be part of that. And when I was 15, I was offered the chance to be a ambassador for Burberry. I was stupid slash naive to listen to certain people in my life to go with a different deal because it was considered to be a more lucrative deal. And I knew in my heart that I didn't want to go with that because I wanted to be able to be with a brand like Burberry and I turned it down. And then in typical fashion, the other deal fell through anyway. And by that time they had signed Romeo Beckham. And I remember going back to that moment and I was like, that's one moment in my life where I was like, and I know it sounds really silly, and I'm like happy with how everything's turned out and it wasn't like anything was going bad, but that would have been my opportunity and my first time that I could have really gone into the fashion world the way that I would have wanted to. So yeah, that definitely, I don't know why it still eats me up, but I was only 15 and I think at that time people still treated me like a kid, like I couldn't make my own decisions. I think any one that has like a really strong feeling about something, just go with it. You know, if you had asked me a year ago, I would have said diving. I've been doing it for so long, I couldn't imagine stepping my foot into one more diving pool ever. But that's kind of gone full circle now, and I'm actually really enjoying it. In the Olympic year, I was completely obsessed with houseplants, to the point where I kept on getting houseplant after houseplant, propagating them, repotting them, make it like all kinds of different things. And I think it was my way of dealing with the anxiety of going to the Olympics was having some kind of routine and structure to care for other things and just have something to go. But now I have like 250 houseplants. I'm never there. So it's really hard to like care for them. And then it's like now become more of a stress than a relaxing thing that it used to be. Thank you so much for watching my knitting talk and be sure to subscribe because there's going to be more knitting talks coming soon. We've also got some vlogs of my diving stuff and following that journey. We've got some knitting masterclasses. So make sure you subscribe to not miss out on any of that. Hope you got to know me a little bit better and we'll be back very soon with more knitting talks. There'll be other people, other people exploring their relationships, how well they know each other and I'll be back for the very last episode. So stay tuned.